The image of the sun coming up in the morning is is profound in two ways. It's the beginning of a new day, you know, so um, a beginning of new possibilities, beginning of change, beginning of something different. You don't know what's going to happen. But it's also the routine of the sun coming up in the morning every day that never changes. I'm an explorer. Uh Life. Misunderstood empath. Undefined. Multifaceted. Human. Jaunda. Crazy. I'm a genius. Chakalaka. Extraordinary. Freedom. Freedom. I'm Dawn. Kung kung kung. Masin kini. Kung kung kung. I think art is um, like a created thing. So whether it's digital or a physical, like an actual painting or a drawing or a song or even like people who do poetry, like you can't feel poetry with your fingers, but you can hear it. So I think art is like a created thing. Art is basically a documentation of everything pretty, ugly and weird. Art is when I express how I feel, and then I feel better afterwards. I think it's the, the, the expression of you know, like our imagination you know, to, to other people. We always wonder, you know, what God brought in the world, like what what is different about them. So art, we can express that individuality, you know, through the imagination. That's that's what I believe. Yeah. Art is the expression of self, more a form of entertainment, I think. Um, art is a very selfless thing. It's something that a lot of people don't seem to understand. As an artist, you're not doing it because you love it or you're passionate about it. You're actually doing it because you want to entertain the next person. I don't know if that makes sense for the average person at home, but it's more about the other person than it is actually about you. Like, you don't dance for yourself, you don't sing for yourself, you don't act for yourself, but you do it for the other person. Art is interpretation, and you express what you interpret, whether it's love, life, your experiences, growth, your surroundings. So art in itself is a way for people to be able to express what they feel mentally and emotionally through whatever art form or whatever medium they choose. It's basically anti-science because science is more of a is more of a typography thing where everything is written down and everything and you have to explain everything. Whereas with art, you don't have to explain anything. You just go with your feelings, go with how you feel, you do things, you express yourself in certain manners, you express it's basically you not having to explain everything to the detail. You can just put it into a feeling, put it into an artwork or whatever, however you feel, just... To me, art is like... Uh, art to me is a, like African. Getting out an idea, feelings, thoughts, um, using various forms of art or various techniques, if I could say. So whether it's writing, in my case, or filmmaking, it's, it's, it's a message to elicit an emotion on my part of thing or to communicate an idea. That is what art is for me. I think art is story. I think, um, I mean, from my side, I've, I've heard many people describing art or defining art in their own ways of seeing and understanding um, how they relate to the term art. Because some art is, is, is part of their way of, of, of practicing day-to-day -day life. Some art is, is, is distant and something that they go to, to experience. Uh, but I think in my own definition, um, we as human beings, we are cultural beings and our day-to-day -day lives um, can be expressed through art, meaning that it can be through music, it can be through poetry, it can be through photography, it can be to, through uh, fine art, you know. So art is a, ma it's a mode of expression of this day-to-day -day life, uh, living experiences that we, we as human uh, go through. For Fortune Shumba, art is everything because for as long as I can remember, art has always been a part of my life and even though I wasn't aware and I couldn't make sense of the term. As I grew older then I was like, okay, 
so I'm an artist because everything I do is somehow creative and because I'm from Pumalanga it would be what they would call weird but for me it was like creativity and it was just like me being myself so that's why I say it's everything to me because it's who I am you know what I mean I started performing when I was probably five and obviously when you're that age it's just for fun it's you know you don't really but um, over the years that passion grew and um, people would tell me like no you need something to fall back on go study law or psychology or something and I was like nah fam this is what I want to do and ever since then unfortunately I've, I've always had a family that's just like push your passion you know like go for it so yeah, I think since I was five, I've just, artistic stuff have always found me. Even if, like, I didn't necessarily think that I could, but they've just, I've always been a part of productions. I've always been singing somehow. Even at, like, family gatherings, but put on, like, little shows, um, you know, for the family. And it was just, it, it just always happened and it was so innate and so natural. Artists are cool, man. Artists are cool. Artists are cool, I. I have parents who I think I think were artists before we labeled them artists, you know. I had those parents that were uh, like any childhood, we used to, you know, we, we used to get punished, we used to get beaten, whatever it may be. But the type of rules we had at home, the type of rules other kids had at home were kind of different. I was always I was always my borders were always a lot more flexible. Um, and I think that's just based on who my parents were and what they were exploring within their own art, their writing and so forth, their cooking. Um, so I've always wanted to be an artist. Really painful and frustrating when you get people who are like, yeah, I'm just going to do acting, I'm just going to do presenting, I'm just going to be a singer, I'm just going to be a dancer. It looks so easy. It's not easy, guys. And when you have people on the spot, oh, you act, oh, you dance, do it right now. No, uh, why not? It's, it's what you do, yeah, but I don't want to do it right now. Also, are you gonna pay me? Are you gonna dentist right now? Are you gonna doctor right now? No, so I just feel like it's possible, but you definitely have to respect the art form. You have to respect everybody in it. You have to be professional and consistent and work hard because you're only as good as your last performance. <laughs> Like I have this ability to understand people and relate to them even if I don't always have the same experiences and I think that ability is what allows me to tell stories um, and just relate to people and make friends with people because I, I show them somehow that I understand them. People don't want to act like they're human beings anymore, it's like they're AI or something. Out here being, I'm strong, black woman this, black man that. We're not, we're just simple human beings. Well, I think you can't define me, who I am. I think over the years, I've always told myself, okay, I think I'm this person. But as years go by, I think I've kind of developed into, um, you know, people, like someone that I never thought I'd be. So I think even from, you know, five years down the line, I'll probably be a different person depending on what experiences I've been through, so that's why I call myself both. That's why I, I, um, you know, I, I see myself as, as undefined. I tend to think of things that people don't think about, and I tend to portray them and explain them in a manner in which a lot of people um, didn't think you can explain a thing or portray a thing in a, in a sense. So I, I tend to call myself a genius because genius is before they're known to be geniuses, they're known as crazy. So I don't like using the, the word crazy. So I prefer to see myself as a genius because once they can tell, once they can relate to your craziness, that's when they can see that you are way forward and you were way before them. So that's when they, they tend to think you're a genius. You know, um, situations are dead. They are non-existent without the human. Whether they are good or bad, but situations are dead, whether you like it or not. But 
when the human is introduced, they become a lion. Then they start challenging you, then they start to move you, then they start to shift you in different dimensions, shapes and forms. And that's why I say I am life, because without me there's no coke, even though it is there. There is no taste to it, there is no lanto to it, you know what I mean? So it's, it's just that, that I am life, because which, which, whatever the situation I step into, I bring that human factor to it. I think I fear censorship and suppression and hate. I fear those things. My biggest fear is that you see people who've made it. And when I say made it, according to society that is being on TV and being on a big show. I've, I've, so we recently did a project where we did industrial theater and we have some people who've been on TV, quite big stars. And just the fact that you can't, the moment you step out of your house, your life is not yours. You have to cater a lot to your fans and your audience members according to what they want. And that's very hard because then you lose your sense of freedom. <laughs> You can't go to the mall and just have dinner. You can't go to the movies. You can't just be you. And the thing that's most upsetting is you can ask very nicely, yes, guys, I'm going to attend to you. I'll take a picture. I'll do whatever. Can I please just have a few minutes or an hour with my loved one? The next thing you know, oh, my gosh, so-and-so is such a diva. She was being so mean. She wouldn't even take a picture. She wouldn't do this and that. And they actually get pretty violent in public spaces. You know, I first, when we got onto the project, and I saw bodyguards. I was like, Guys, do you need bodyguards? Is that necessary? And then you get in malls and in public places. And you realize you do because people are so forceful with what they want out of an actor or performer and they want it right now that it beco becomes really dangerous. My biggest fear is, okay, it used to be, you know, to die without, you know, without having been famous. But now I think, my fear is to is, is 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 to be I don't know is is to fall under society norms to do things um, because of peer pressure. You know, I don't want to lose myself in any kind of way. That so that's my biggest fear. My biggest fear is to is to never ever lose myself. Um, in anything and to always stay grounded and to always you know um make sure that as an individual i stick out and as an individual i help others um and as an african woman as well i help other women and i help other kids that um that don't have you know opportunities so my biggest fear is to not get to that point whereby I'm that figure and whereby I'm that figure whereby people are looking up and saying, listen, this person did it, so can I, so. I, I fear sleeping on myself, you know what I mean, more than anything. I, I, I feel like, yeah, I need to be the best that I have. And if I waste that, that's what I fear. It's like when you sit back and you fail something, you know that you could have done better. You know, no matter how much someone shouts at you, what they say to you, if you know inside, that's the feeling that I fear. We've gone through so much that the things that we want to do weren't made for us to do. The worlds that we're trying to break into weren't made for us to break into. So now, we, every time we go into the space, we're not searching for signs that we can. We're searching for signs that keep telling us why we shouldn't be here. We're searching for reasons why we shouldn't be here why we should give up, you know, um, why I shouldn't be an actor, because you, you haven't been cast in two years, or why I shouldn't be a creator because no one's picked up your idea for so long. You search, you know, we walk into spaces where we search for signs that say we shouldn't be here, because we've always been told we shouldn't be here, so we find it that easy to give up. So I think that's why people give up. Well, I hope for like one day, like my music will always be remembered as he started as 
a young kid, but now he's in his late thirties and he's still like he still has the same passion, he still has the same drive for his music. Like maybe let's say after ten years, ten years from now, what I hope for is that I'll be regarded as one of the best producers in the country. And after that, one of the best producers internationally. Someone that's diverse. I can jump into commercial, deep house, hip hop, that type of thing. Like I'm, I'm an all rounder producer. That's what I hope for. I hope for the artists to arrive in South Africa. They're still going to have artists in South Africa. Or maybe they're still going to have artists in South Africa. Or Western art. We don't have Western art. We don't have the culture of going to the theater. No, the theater is a nice place. Wow. Authenticity. Uh, sincerity. Um, I hope, uh, well, it, it is developing, you know, so I can't fight that. Um, and more black consciousness. Not me, I'm not meaning like we should all dress up in animal skins and whatnot, but conscious in the form of we need to, we need to know who we are. We need to research who we are so that we have a lot of stories to tell the people. Because while we can't be looking to Americans and tell American stories and be yo yo man, sub dog, you know, we need to find out where we come from so we can tell our own stories. Because a lot of people will relate. For me, I I hope people get to study me one day and boss me. <laughs> no, I really do. Like I think for me that would be amazing, you know. But in life. Um, I hope people respect creatives more you know, in the future because they really, really, really undermine creatives. However, they forget that the cars they drive, the houses they live in, the clothes they wear, they are created by creatives. So I hope at some point, even if it's a hundred years later, they start giving us the respect they should, you know, even if they don't, but at least, you know, acknowledge that I respect, like, there's those guys, they produce this type of thing. So that's what Making you raise your volume down. Yeah. Good. Kong kong kong, ma singe ne. Kong kong kong, ma singe ne. Kong kong kong, ye ne.